I'm coming in to check on Ben because Ben is going to put this mantle up. Oh, Ben. That looks really nice. That's a bonus, huh? So he's just uh, put this wood up and he just said a bad word. Oh, Stephen Vienda Fessa. So Stephen just plastered that wall <laughs> that then stuck his arm in. Well, you also said a word that I can't broadcast. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna check. <laughs> ben just cursed, so he wanted me to refilm. We're gonna check on Ben and what he's working on, which is this fireplace. And what we've done is this fireplace mantle used to uh, be more proud. And because this is a kind of a walkway, this is a high traffic area in front of this filled in fireplace, he's uh, pushed it back a little bit. And in fact, this is, this used to be in front, this whole frame, and then uh, the trim work on the mantle. So we've just not included that. Then it's stripped all the wood and put it up and he's about to put the, the top of the mantle on. Well, because that bit is no longer here. Yes. And now I'm going to adjust this. So he has to adjust. So I'll be trimming that, trimming down here. Uh, and then, all right, so that's untrimmed. You haven't done anything yet. No, no, I'm not trimmed yet. Can you hold it up and we'll just take a little look? Uh, uh, be careful of the wall. All right, that's good enough. All right, so, so we're that's trimming down the inside of this. Right, right. Okay. The front Perfect. Out. Okay. Back ends off. Yep. So. And then we'll. Put that back in. Excellent. And so really, you just need to trim the same thickness of this. Yeah, so I've already I'm it pointing down, over so here. It's this. gonna be nice and flush with the underscoring. All right. Along here, so I'll just marry up again to the same level of right. protrusion as before. Okay, perfect. We'll check in later. It's very dusty. <laughs> feels very dusty. I'm assuming that there's some very dusty sanding going on. Come on, chambre de vapeur. Come on, chambre de vapeur. Oui. spa. C'est le spa. Oui. Ah, c'est bien. Je vais boire. J'ai noté il y a beaucoup de poussière euh, avant j'arrive. Ah oui. Oui, ça. Oui, Pardon, oui. Ah, oui. Oh, juste ici, juste ici, derrière moi, ah, derrière la porte. Oui, oui. Papa. Oui. Well, c'est un peu... Ah oui, c'est brouillard. C'est brouillard. Brouillard, oui, exactement. <laughs> All right, au revoir. All right. Whew. It's dusty in here, too. <laughs> I'm going to get out into the stifling hot fresh air. There is our <laughs> lovely door for the moment. Um, well, that was fascinating. Yes, incredibly dusty. And Hugh, who is a glutton for punishment, is working in the garden. Hmm. Morning. Morning. Oh my goodness. 
it's oddly not crazy sunny because it's a little overcast. Yeah. But still, it feels oppressive. Yeah, it's very humid. <laughs> very. But it, it's compared to yesterday, uh, in the afternoon yesterday, it was unbearable. Yeah. But we got through it. Climbing roses that never seem to want to climb. They will. They will. <laughs> So we put in these white climbing roses. The idea is to climb over the, the grill, but they just have been a little reluctant. They're growing from the bottom very profusely, but not from the top. Maybe they're really not climbing roses. <laughs> yes. Maybe Mark lied to me and he's just- It's his form of torture. Presenting me with a challenge that's impossible. What are these? Do you know what's planted here? Uh, these were the dahlias that I planted oh. about six weeks ago. Oh, nice. So there's different varieties. Oh, that'll be interesting. They are just starting to flower on the other side. They're quite pretty. Purple flowers. Where do you see flowers? On the first one, you just see the purple flowers coming through here. Oh, these, sorry. I'm looking at the other plants. Yeah, they're the different varieties. Sorry. They are dahlias still, I think. Apparently. Huh. Yeah, they're just starting. I didn't think these were dahlias. They, I, I know. That's, that's, aren't dahlias, they're kind of like a big flower. Yeah, but I, I know, but they definitely... Unless they put the thing, wrong things in the wrong packets, they definitely work. I'm giving you a highly suspicious look. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've never checked. I just trusted the packets and I just went with it. And now I'm going to use my picture this app and see what's going <laughs> on. Oh, is that what you're doing? <laughs> uh, if I'm wrong, you've got to delete that video. I'm not challenging your knowledge of plants, well, I, I'm but I'm totally challenging <laughs> your knowledge of plants. I, I certainly don't proclaim to be an expert, but... Oh yeah, but they do have little purple flowers. And? That says... Yes? Russian sage. Ah, that makes much more sense. It does look, makes more sense by look, but why would they have those? And Mark did buy, he was, he's been, he's been interested in planting Russian sage. We see it uh, planted around, like sometimes like in the road, like, you know, like in the circles or the roundabouts. Yes, yeah. Where they plant them, there's a lot of Russian sage. Yeah. And they really grow beautifully. Uh, so he's talked about it, so he might have ordered some. He but, might have ordered them and, yeah. So maybe they, I don't know why they said dahlias, because... It, it <laughs> may have sorry. been mixed in. I was just <laughs> like, it does not look like a dahlia. The weather's been very hot. You've got to cut me some slack here. <laughs> I think these are the dahlias. That looks like a possibility. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. No, I've obviously put dahlias <laughs> That's why in. when you said they've got purple flowers, I'm looking at I don't see any flowers. <laughs> I don't see any flowers going on. Let me go for a little walk. I want to get to the sunflowers are just on the uh, ridge behind the village. I'm just going to go slow and easy in this heat. It's, uh, I think it's supposed to be like 99 today, which 30, what is it, 30 something in everyone else's language. All right, I am coming to the end of the village <laughs> and the sunflowers I'm trying to get to are just past this first field. And you can kind of see a little bit of yellow in the distance.
you can see it's very different construction. Everything about it, the style is very different. So really we had just this steeple of the church that's left. And then this was built later. And it's very possible that this was built around the same time as the current chateau, which would be early 19th century. Uh, because it was used by the lords of the chateau who built the current one uh, as their final resting place. And architecturally, it's actually very similar to <laughs> uh, the chateau. And in some ways similar to the church in the village. The church in the village is also early 19th century. And I might have mentioned this before, the previous owner told me that uh, they used the stones from the old chateau to build the church in the village. And that was my little tour and view of the sunflower fields. Ah, it's just afternoon. Church chimes for noon, and then about hello. <laughs> about five minutes later, it rings the bells again. Uh, and in the pause, I could hear very, very faintly. I heard the church bells of Marignac, which is on the next ridge uh, to the left, like behind the church. It's the village of Marignac and their church. And often, I'll hear their bells faintly as well. Here we are back at the village. And you can see, I'm at the sign of the crossroads, where when I started this little walk, I went to the right, around on the street on the road to the field. And I crossed up to the field to the ridge and came back down and came down from the left. The Judy Show is filmed before a live studio audience. Well, good evening and welcome to The Judy Show. I'm Judy from Chateau Avensac. This evening, I have some very special guests on the show. A lot of our viewers have been asking questions. So Judy thought, well, let's just get them in here. I'd like to introduce you to Philip and Mark. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so let's just get right into it. The juicy stuff. Philip, tell us all about yourself. I was born in New Jersey and raised there. I have an older brother and sister, so I'm the youngest. It's the best place to be in a family. And I went to university. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the oldest. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I went to university in New York City at New York University, NYU, and why not? And I uh, I went to school for in technology. I have a degree in systems. Uh, what do I have a degree in? <laughs> information systems. I have a degree in information systems, which is kind of business and comp sci. It's a, kind of a combo degree. And I, after graduating university, I worked on Wall Street for several years. And then for some bizarre reason, I thought, why make a lot of money? And when I can work for a nonprofit. <laughs> so I worked for the Metropolitan Museum of Art for a couple of years. And then I realized, oh, that's why I worked on Wall Street. So I went back to Wall Street for a couple of years. <laughs> and then eventually uh, I moved to Los Angeles, which is where I met Mark. <laughs> And I worked in consulting for a number of years after that. Well, what is it you do now? Uh, I work with mostly financial data for the purposes of transparency, which is like public companies when they have to file their financial reports. However, in the last few years, there's been a big emphasis on <laughs> impacts by companies such as environmental impacts, social impacts, and things like that. There's a monumental tsunami change going on in the exciting world of financial reporting, where now we're trying to figure out how do we capture, how do you measure a company's impact on the world in various ways. It's quite fascinating. And that's what I do. Well, that was really um, 
interesting. Uh, I'm not sure I understood a single word that he said. Um, so, Mark, uh, tell us about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Oregon and figured out at a very early age that I was not going to make money and I was going to go into artistic fields. Um, I ended up uh, as a cutter fitter, uh, a, which is basically I'm a pattern maker by trade. Uh, I can visualize what you are wearing. I can take it apart. I can draw it out in my head. I can cut it out, sew it together and um, in fact, he used to make clothes for me sometimes without me ever being there. And he would just come home with like a pair of trousers or pants. And uh, I, I uh, yeah, or a shirt, and I would just put it on and they would fit. Uh, I, I used to work in the theater industry and then moved to film and television. And I ran J&M Costumers in Los Angeles for 12 years and then decided that the movie industry is, it's basically ownership and I had had enough, I had to get out. So I went into graphic design and that's basically what I still do to this day for the food and wine industry. So that was um, interesting also, uh, but let's get to the good stuff, the juicy stuff. Uh, talk to us about those things below your waist. Your, um, legs. Are they working? My legs are doing a lot better, Judy. Uh, I am still not able to walk unassisted. I can walk assisted. Uh, I walk at the parallel bars. I walk with a walker some. I can go uh, 10 to 30 feet, depending on the day. It's uh, now all about building muscle uh, and still waiting for my left leg to to wake up completely. It's still, I'd say, 50% to sleep, and uh, most of the muscles work, some still, so I'm pretty shaky, but we are getting there. And um, I'm hoping the next six months we'll see a really big improvement. So in other words, no. They're not working. Well, if they were working, he could get up and walk away from Judy, and that would make, well, that would make Judy sad. Well, it's great to get to know both of you a little better. Now, how long have you been together? Interested viewers are dying to know. We've been together 24 years. Married for 22 and... Yeah, 16 years. Oh, yeah, we were actually married twice. <laughs> um, uh, September 15th, 2002 was our first wedding. That was a non-legal wedding. Uh, and then in California for a brief time, it became legal in 2008. And we were down there the first day to get our marriage license and we were legally married September 1st, on my birthday, 2008. 2008. Congratulations! So we've been married 22, 20, and 16 years. And 16, 22 <laughs> and 16 years. Oh, those are such wonderful photographs. You're both so cute and adorable and young. What happened? Well, a lot of viewers write to Judy and say, Dear Judy, why is it that Mark and Philip only put out a video every three weeks? Could you explain to the viewers why this is? They want more! I wish we did more. Uh, but it's, it's actually a lot of, it's shockingly a lot of work to put the videos together and to film everything. And it's, uh, it's hard. Editing takes immense amounts of time. And, and in truth, what really happens here is things are happening on a daily basis. and. Philip will happen to just film this, or he'll film that, or he'll film something over here, and wish, something over there, and something I wish over there. We, and I wish we would like plan this, <laughs> like plan these videos out a little better. I don't really feel like it's all off the cuff and like you know, we're very haphazard film production company. I think really the issue mm -hmm. is you spend three hours a day it's in the time. morning with 
a physical therapist in the house. And then we spend about three hours between going there, spending there, and coming back. At least three, three to four hours. Three to four hours. Uh, Every with afternoon. A physical therapist at his um, office. And that's five days a week, generally. And sometimes we also go on Saturday to the physical therapist. So between that, managing the house, working, squeezing in work. Uh, I mean, it's, I, I, it's, I don't want to make excuses. Sunday really is our only free day. And you wake up at noon and go, oh boy, can't wait to edit and get that video done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, is, it is about <laughs> timing. Unfortunately, I, I do hope that we will get more efficient. <laughs> every, every week, I'm like, next week, I'm gonna be more organized. But you know, that we'll be able to start putting out videos more often. I, I would like to do that. I, I do that. <laughs> we see a lot of the same rooms in every video. Could you explain to the viewers why this is? So we have been focusing <laughs> a lot on what we call the service wing, which is the kitchen, the kitchen, the kitchen, the scullery, <laughs> laundry room. <laughs> it's that it's one wing of the house, which comprises a bunch of those rooms. And, uh, but we're doing, we're working on a lot of rooms kind of at the same time. So we don't quite get any one room done, but they're all slowly progressing forward. Let's also say that this kind of work is very slow and we are not, banked with hours and hours of video of things that happened in the past. So we're giving basically what is happening at the moment and it's going to be a lot of what's happening at the moment in the same rooms as they progress further and further along. We're doing our best, I promise. Well, that's really, really interesting. I had no idea so much was involved in this video thing. Uh, uh, is there anything else the two of you would like to add? We are working really hard to actually open, let's call it a soft open, a uh, our first event at the Chateau next year. Uh, it will probably be late in 2025, but we are making it a goal to try to do something really fun and wonderful here. Uh, obviously for a limited number of guests, but keep your eye on our website at thechateau.com and it will just magically appear. Well, gentlemen, it's been an absolute delight, as Philip would say, to have you both on The Judy Show. I hope all of our viewers will join us next time for another spectacular episode. I'm Judy from Chateau Avantac. That's Mark and Philip from Chateau Avantac. You have a great day. Bye! Well, you might have noticed that this cabinet was fully in place and looked Fantastic. <laughs> and Ben is now futzing around with it because after he had it all in place looking perfect, we realized it was just a little too tall. <laughs> and so poor Ben has taken it apart and he's figuring out how he can squeeze out a few centimeters. We need to squeeze out about eight. Uh, to make it a little bit lower. It was just uncomfortably a little too high. And uh, so eight centimeters, of, like I don't know what, three or four inches. Um, and so he had to pull it out and is working on taking a little off the top and taking a little off the bottom and reducing the feet to squeeze out our eight centimeters. <laughs> It'll get us to just about right uh, when it's all done and finished. So, we felt very bad about that because it looked so good. <laughs> but we have a saying. What's the saying? Uh, everything that can be done can be done again. What can be done can be done again. <laughs> All this has happened before and will happen again. That sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Well, after a lot of drama with this cabinet, it is finally done, it's in place, and knock on plywood. We have plywood in place, 
and the sink is in place. You can see we have a nice big wide sink, which I really love. Um, this sink will primarily be used for uh, cooking, so washing vegetables and things like that. But if you do need to clean some pots and pans or dishes, it's just a nice big wide sink to do that. I really love a, a big sink. Uh, but yes, it's all in place. And it's also now had a significantly better height. Ben really worked magic on figuring out where he could take some of the height out to get it down. He had to take about, I think five or six centimeters off of it. <laughs> he adjusted the feet, he adjusted the bottom, he adjusted the very top edge uh, to get this to the point where it would all be uh, coming out at the right height when we have the marble put on top or the stone put on top. While I'm here, <laughs> you can see these enormous amounts of dust I came by this morning to check on Steven and Sylvain, and <laughs> I was like, it, there was like a cloud of dust here in front of this door because they were standing in the next room and it was a very intense cloud in there. So I just wanted to come in here and check out what they were doing. Uh, so I believe they've been working on the plaster board or the placa plat uh, and smoothing, smoothing that out. Plus. Uh, the wall here is now being sanded and smoothed out. I don't think they're quite done. In fact, we can see there's, oh no, that's actually quite smooth. Um, it looked like there was a little fissure there, but it's actually perfectly smooth. Uh, they said there's still more work to do in here um, and maybe on the ceiling. So they're doing all of this at once. So it's been a lot of work and it was incredibly, incredibly dusty. But if you look at these walls, before this was done, it is, it's just a world of difference. And it's just, now I just feel like, oh God, it looks so, so fantastically great. Well, I hope you enjoyed this update on what's going on in the Chateau, particularly here in the Grand Cuisine and some of its adjacent rooms. Plus that amazing interview on the Judy Show. <laughs> I feel so famous now. I've been on the Judy Show. I really, I feel like we really got to know Hugh a little bit better and his amazing in-depth knowledge of plants. A very special thank you to our patrons whose contributions go directly towards the renovation and refurbishment of the Chateau. And of course, all of our viewers, thank you very much for your support. It's really appreciated. And please let us know what you think. Always feel free to leave comments. We actually do read them all. Mark tries to respond to all the comments he can and uh, it's always appreciated. Thank you very much. This is Philip at Chateau Evansac. States. I was born in New Jersey and raised there. And I, oh God, I see you didn't prepare me, so I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> totally unprepared. You, you talk about yourself all the time. All right. I'm totally going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate you. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, so let's get right into it. The viewers want to know more about you. Philip? Yes. You want me to do that again? No, I don't want you to do that at all. What do you want me to do? Uh, hold on. Let Judy speak. <laughs> Philip? Tell the viewers all about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do for a living? How much money do you make? 